thanks for the kind introduction and also thank you for um, giving me uh, the possibility to speak here today. Um, actually, what you're going to see today is a team effort from Triscon, that's where I work, and um, all the demo part is was prepared together um, from uh, by Fabian, Chris, uh, Christian, and Arthur. So thanks for that. And um, yeah, let's just dive into it. It's today about automated quality gates in performance testing. So what are you going to see? We prepared a demo that consists of Neoload, Dynatrace, and Captain. And we're actually really um, brave because we prepared two demos. <laughs> Uh, so uh, there's a lot that can go wrong. Let's see if the demo gods are with us. And there's a little bit of theory as well, um, but it will be mostly practical demo in this presentation. But we're also going to talk a little bit, bit about SLIs and SLOs, as you've already heard in previous talks. And I'm also going to show a little bit of the data exchange, which is quite cool, between Neoload and Dynatrace. I think we haven't seen this one today. Just a brief introduction of who we are. Um, we are Triscon. We're dedicated to performance engineering and all, the, all that comes with it. So mostly performance testing, also APM. We're based in Vienna. You see a picture of uh, where we are currently at right now in Vienna's Millennium Tower. And if you ever come to Vienna, whoever is listening or watching the recording, um, just come by for a coffee, flick us an email, give us a call. You're very welcome here. Um, yeah, that's just another slide. As uh, Henry Gall already mentioned, we also uh, knew this partner and recently became Dynatrace partner. And what you're going to see today is a load test that is being performed by Neoload. And we are triggering this load test from an Azure DevOps pipeline. Could do this from anywhere, but we chose the Azure DevOps pipeline. The application is actually a front end. I'm going to show it to you. It's a demo application that was uh, coded by ourselves, by Arthur. Thanks for you. Um, thanks to you for that. And uh, the application is actually permanently monitored by Dynatrace. And we're taking metrics from Dynatrace at the end of the test to evaluate the test automatically using Captain. And uh, to put this all together, this is, so to say, then the quality gate use case. But what are the benefits Anyway, uh, just um, a quick reminder, we had this like a couple of times today already. Of course, if you automate performance tests, if you automate uh, evaluation, you get all the benefits that you always get with automating tests. You get highly reproducible tests. You can integrate those tests in CI CD pipelines. You have spent less time in test evaluation. Of course, there comes a risk with it, as we talked about earlier. and. Um, it is also a prerequisite if you want to do performance testing as a service and if you want to enable others to do your tests in your absence. For, for example, if you're the performance engineer and everything is automated, other people can execute it and benefit from it as well. And it's also actually a, a foundation for case engineering if you started in test stages. These are just a few examples. Now, just um, before we are going to deep dive into the demo part, a quick reminder is the only slide about SLIs and SLOs, um, but we're going to need this. So to sum it up what we heard already today, there is service level indicators. Service level indicators are simply metrics. It could be anything. It could be kilogram. It could be um, response time. If we talk about uh, performance testings, of course, we care about response times, error rates. Uh, so it's something we want to measure. And of course, we need an objective on this to make a decision. So this is the SLO, the service level objective. Just an example, the response times uh, could be less than 400 milliseconds over a certain period of time. And this is, so to say, the foundation of your SLA, your service level agreement. It's a business agreement that often defines uh, also a penalty. So if those goals are not met and um, yeah, you need the SLIs and SLOs to actually inform your SLAs. So what are the demo ingredients today? Um, I already said we're using Neoload. We also Neoload Web will be a part and our Triscon testing turf, it's our test application, is running on an Ubuntu server, uh, actually on a 
Key3S, Keys, it's the single node Kubernetes system that Andy was talking about in his talk. And it's all on there. Also, Captain is there. And we're using Dynatrace and we're using new load controllers, which are not in the cluster. There is also an option to have dynamic infrastructure where you, so to say, enable the load generators and um, put them up as uh, the pipeline is running and they get destroyed afterwards. But ours are now, so to say, stationary somewhere else. And we have our Azure DevOps pipeline. Why am I explaining this um, to you before we actually do the demo? Because you're going to see a pipeline. In a pipeline, wonderful things happen. It's like a symphony. A lot of things are, are going to happen. But uh, in the demo part, mostly what you will see is that I'm going to hit the button and trigger the pipeline. So <laughs> now we are actually just giving a brief introduction of what's going to happen in the pipeline. So it's in Azure DevOps. We're going to trigger it. And our new load project, which holds all the information about the scenario and all the test cases that are going to be executed in the performance test, they are uploaded. So we pull the latest version from our Git repository. That goes to new load web, which is actually triggering the controller somewhere else and the load generators and putting stress on our application that we prepared. This application is being monitored by Dynatrace constantly. And once the test is over, we get feedback to the pipeline. And an event is sent automatically um, from the pipeline to Captain, but actually by a plugin from Bert van der Heiden. Thanks for providing the Azure DevOps plugin for Captain here. And um, as soon as Captain gets notified that the test is over, the metrics are pulled into Captain from Dynatrace and the test results are automatically being evaluated. So to say this is where we want to land in the Captain Bridge and see how a test was performed, how it was doing. And now let's already get into it. So this is the demo part A. It's so to say the happy case. I'm going to trigger the pipeline. And to save some time, I'm going to trigger it first. And 90 seconds, so it's not like a really long load test is going to be performed. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to show you the actual application we're putting under stress. So now we're here in Azure DevOps. It's basically where we kick off the pipeline. We have a YAML-based definition of our pipeline here. It's some parameters. We could choose different scenario from our test. Uh, it's all set up with 10 virtual user, 90 seconds, and the pipeline will start. Now, what's going to happen is that this is now the Azure DevOps pipeline. Going to give it some time. In the meantime, I'm going to show you our little demo application. And here we have our demo application called Tris Contesting Turf. Um, we're only doing one test case now, just to keep it simple. So this is the landing page. We have a registration. And uh, I can enter a new user here, I could say. Pack 1000. All right. And just some password. And we're going to have a new user here. In the user overview, it's in the landing page. We see when a user was registered the last time and when he was online. And this is where our test case end. And during our 90 seconds load test, this is going to be performed over and over again. And as soon as it starts, we're going to also see it in NeoLoad Web. So what has been, what has happened so far? So far, as I told you, in the Azure DevOps pipeline, we pulled the latest NeoLoad uh, project, so to say our load test uh, from Git. We uploaded it to NeoLoad Web, which ultimately starts the test. And uh, all these resources required, therefore, um, are pulled up uh, dynamically during the pipeline. Now we are already at the part where NeoLoad Web is involved. So let's switch over to NeoLoad Web. And we see here in NeoLoad Web that there is load test already starting. This is our test. As I said, it's going to be about 90 seconds. And uh, I think most of the people in the audience already have seen NeoLoad Web. But just for a brief explanation, this is the load test overview. 
we have our 10 virtual users here. So this is the number of parallel active users, so to say, who execute these test steps, which are seen here. For, ex for instance, we have three transactions. It's like landing on the page and submitting the register button, so the, the form, so to say, and then loading the initial page again. And if we would have some errors already on front end, um, which is currently not the case, uh, as it should be, since we're showing the happy case first, um, we would be able to see it here in the errors a chart of Neoload. Here we also see what test we kicked off. And eventually, if everything is done, we are going to see something here in the captain's bridge, which has been explained already before by Andy. So here we see that we did this a couple of times already before. So we have some reference results and uh, our new test results are soon to be in here. Once the new load test is ready, here our pipeline is um, continuing, sending back the start evaluation event to Captain, um, consisting also or containing also the information when the test was performed. and um, Captain is going to pull in the metrics that we defined, and I'm going to show you in the second demo where these metrics come from and how to specify them. Um, just to keep it simple for now, here we are going to have about 20 metrics that are being evaluated. And if I hit the refresh here, we already see that the evaluation was uh, started, the event uh, came into Captain a minute ago, so it must be a couple of seconds only uh, once we see the results and see how our test, how our test was performed. And uh, what we're going to end up with is a score based on all these metrics, ultimately. Right. Let me, since we are short of time anyway, also show you, here we are also already done with the pipeline or oh, maybe let's let's just wait for it there it is already and uh, we see in our last <clears throat> test the one we just performed we see here the timestamp all these metrics have been evaluated and we end up with a final score of our for our build um, i say now for our build but our test now our demo did not include any deployment. So what we actually want to show is that um, if you're a performance engineer and if you're not um, doing pipelines, you do, you do not even need a pipeline for this. If you just want to have a quality gate and automate the process of evaluating your tests, you can do so. Um, but this is, so to say, easy now to integrate in a deployment pipeline since you can push back the score and decide whether to go to the next stage or not. So how does this score um, work? About So it's the name of the metrics we're going to measure. I won't go into detail about every one, uh, every single one here, but we have the failure rate, we have the response times from near load transactions here, and What's really cool is um, because you could say, well, from my load testing tool, I also have uh, response times and I also have the failure rates available. But here you have the possibility to pull in metrics from anywhere. And I have met met metrics in there like memory usage or CPU usage in your pod or number of database calls um, that were made from your backend API and we are calling the front end. So we can even baseline the backend here, which is not directly triggered in our test. It's only indirectly. And uh, you end up with a score here. And ultimately, since it's Azure DevOps, you could go for a coffee and end up with an email saying that everything is fine. So this would be the happy case for now. And now let's have a little look at or deeper insight of how this all works together. Um, Captain has been mentioned quite a lot today already. It has a lot of use cases since uh, 
we are focusing here on one approach. I'm going to outline the use case we're focusing on is quality gates. We're not doing the entire um, deployment. And you've seen this slide in Andy's talk maybe before already. It's like um, kept an overview from far away, not consisting or containing all the individual components, but describing the flow quite well. What happens is that there is an evaluation event. As I told you, at, uh, in our case, it's uh, sent from Azure DevOps based on the plugin, it goes to the API of Captain, the Lighthouse service takes care of everything and uh, it decides what to do with it. And we have multiple SLI provider options. So the metrics can come from anywhere. As Andy said, uh, you can even write your own SLI provider if necessary. And in our case, we used the Dynatrace SLI provider. Now there's also a Neoload SLI provider, and we simply choose to use the Dynatrace SLI provider for this um, for this use case. We could also uh, have chosen Neoload SLI provider. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. It just um, is, so to say, defining your data source, where your, where your metrics come from. And you need the SLIs and SLOs. And you, ultimately, they will end up being shown in the bridge. So where do you get the SLIs and SLOs from? If you're a performance engineer, probably you have um, a load testing evaluation after it somehow semi automized you, You're going to have dashboards or some mechanism to print the data to show you some charts to have a load testing dashboard, so to say. And um, previously, or what kept needs is the SLIs and SLOs in form of a YAML. So you would have to know behind your charts or your dashboards what's the actual name of the metric. It can quite, get quite long. And then you can define your SLOs, your goals on it. And we did this <clears throat> together in a workshop with Andy, and we thought, well, there could be a lot of time saved if we automate this process. So uh, an idea was born in this workshop, and uh, Andy was quite fast, thanks for that, actually, to um, implement this beautiful feature in Captain or in the Dynatrace SLI provider where you can simply specify, if you know Dynatrace, this is a Dynatrace dashboard. You put some additional information for Captain on it, such as the project service or stage, the Captain things to define. And uh, then you have your individual charts, which maybe are there already, and you add additional information for Captain in the header of each chart to tell him what is the name of the SLI and what is the criteria to pass it or not. So to say the SLO is the goal. And this is what I'm going to show you in the second live demo. So what happened in the meantime, of course, you didn't know. This is our demo application, as I said before. Um, we have a REST API behind here. Um, just not to confuse anyone, we have some switches in this application so we can, can um, turn on errors for actually exercises and workshops. And now um, my uh, colleagues turned on an error in this application and we're going to rerun the entire test again. And since I mentioned the Dynatrace dashboard, actually, now I'm going to show it to you first. I'm going to close everything. So it's cool if you have a dashboard to have links to everywhere, to your pipeline, so to say. I'm going to focus on the dashboard in a minute, just kicking off the pipeline and running the same test again. All right. Let's wait and see what happens in the second test. In the meantime, we're going to focus on the load testing dashboard. So the entire purpose of this load testing dashboard is um, to provide the SLIs and the SLOs to Captain. Plus, you get also a nice overview of your metrics that are being evaluated in the test. And um, to pick up the discussion earlier, um, if there is the possibility of false positives in the captain evaluated test of course there is but what i meant by saying that is that you are responsible for defining the correct metrics so um 
you really have to think about what's important in your little test and what you want to measure as always. So this will stay, um, this will always be the case. And what we are actually measuring here is the front end response times, back end response times. So we know, or Dynatrace knows, um, if we trigger this action in the front end, if we click, so to say, in our app somewhere here, what backend calls are made. And we're also baselining this. We're baselining the time spent in database calls, the number of database calls. Since it's all running on Kubernetes in pods or in containers, we can also baseline the resources here, which is quite cool. And um, here we also have our error rates. And we already see that something is increasing here since our test is running. And uh, just to go into the definition, I will show you one example. Here we have like a global criteria for Captain, which says the pass rate has to be 90%. And you can also define a warning rate, which would be then shown as yellow. And you can also define what results should be used for the comparison, just the last valid result or more. And uh, these are the global things, so to say, and I'm gonna show you the failure rate. We want to be very strict in terms of our failure rate. We say, um, we do this also for backend, frontend, et cetera, on the, on the database. And we say it must be less than 1% to pass. And we added the additional information that it has to be a key value like key SLI. What does this mean? So it means that this is violated. If this is violated, the entire test uh, becomes red. And ultimately, if it would be in a pipeline, the pipeline would stop or the project or app would not be deployed in the next stage. And um, from all the other metrics, you can have weights. And uh, so to say, all these together uh, make your final score in the build. And now the pipeline is running again. And for here from my load testing dashboard, I can move to anywhere, yeah? So this is something <laughs> we thought of. It's, it should be called dash ops instead of dev ops. <laughs> Mostly it's all triggered from the dashboard. Here we actually see our new load test again performed. I'm gonna go in there. And as I said, um, my colleagues, uh, implemented or pull the switch where we now will feature some errors, but it's not like random errors in uh, in our application. Here we have, uh, let's actually analyze it in NeoLoad since we have this great tool available in the events. We see what requests are failing. We would also be able to see this, of course, in Dynatrace. And um, let's see, since this is always the same error, not all the data is stored on each request, but here we would see the cause or the root cause of the error is that an item with the same key has already been added in the same time frame. So we have a concurrency problem, which happens quite often based on our um, experience as performance testers. So basically this means we have a performance problem or a, a problem that occurs only in performance tests if two people are hitting the same button at the same time in the same second. And if we see here, these are actually our users generated during our load test. We can see that only one was created in the same second and not two as it has been in the first test. So now the interesting part is, so if we have now a, a problem in our app, we don't want our automatic evaluation to uh, have a score of 100 and to proceed to the next stage. So we're going to the Captain Bridge and let's see if it's already finished. Here we see actually already it's red and the evaluation is done. We have the metrics here again. And uh, the failure rate on three of these components, front end API was too high. Since these are key metrics or key SLIs, the entire test is evaluated red, though as failed. Although we defined that the global goal is 75%, which means 75 out of 100. And if everything went right, I should have even gotten an email. And now we actually see here that the captain tells me I have triggered a load test um, but that actually failed with a score of 95. Now, let's see how much time I have still left. I think 
it's still a little bit of time to give you a quick idea of what to do if your test fails. Of course, you want to do investigation. And if you do investigation, you want to have a lot of data available. And the Neoload Dynatrace integration is really helpful there. So um, basically, all you have to do, thanks to, to Henrik and his team, is uh, hit the checkbox in Neoload and uh, add your Dynatrace tenant. What's going to happen is that all your requests from Neoload are tagged in Dynatrace. So you, those are marked, and you're going to recognize that they come from Neoload based on those tags. So this was for us easy then to find our Neoload requests and to uh, use them for baselining in Captain. This is one thing, and the other cool thing is that all the services that are involved in our load test are actually marked with additional information, with events, when the load test was started and when it was ended, and when it ended. So we see even the scenario, and uh, we see this not only on our front-end application, which was basically what we fired at, we um, have another integration here in Neoload. It's a new feature to tag. And you simply have to tag your front end, the, the target of your test, and all the rest is done by Neoload. What do I mean with all the rest? Everything that is below the surface, all the dependencies, the database, the services in the backend, they get automatically tagged. Thanks for that. This is a really, really cool feature. So on all the other services, when a load test was performed, all the other services involved will also have the tag in Dynatrace to see that something was going on here. If you were not the person and that triggers the load test, you might not be aware of that. Um, now let's just talk about some future perspectives and other possibilities, what we could have done in the demo. There is a metric ingestion API in Dynatrace and uh, we could push even more transaction metrics in there. Now we had a transaction metrics based on individual requests. Captain currently supports one SLI provider. We could have even, even mixed Dynatrace and anything else. You could also do Prometheus and, as I said, a Neoload SLI provider. And uh, what I didn't show you, I'm quickly going to going to do that if there's still time is that also metrics from Dynatrace are pushed back to Neoload in Neoload web. So you could simply use the Neoload web, uh, the Neoload SLI provider and uh, have these metrics evaluated by Captain. We didn't show the entire deployment, although this would just be an extension to the pipeline, so to say. And there is a Neoload service available for Captain, which would run on Kubernetes and your entire test could be run by Captain using the Neoload service. It could use dynamic infrastructure, so to say, load generators that pop up in your Kubernetes environment and trigger your load test. We um, decided to do a stationary load test and everything that's already there outside, since this is probably the case for, for most people. And uh, in Neoload Web, if you if we think further, it uh, it is a great thing that you have a resource reservation available for planning these tests. If you're gonna have multiple automated performance tests, you really have to have a schedule and an overview of when when is uh, which test performed. And uh, to finish already my talk, I want to refer to a next talk. So um, since I mentioned we are Neoload and uh, recently also Dynatrace partner, if you want to see how this works at an actual customer site, tune in in one month at the Neoload user to the Neoload user conference, the ramp up. I'll be talking there about also Neoload Dynatrace and Captain at IT Ergo together with Alex from IT Ergo. And uh, yeah, this is, was it from my part. And uh, thanks for listening. I'm up to questions. Thanks, Roman. Uh, uh, we'll enjoy it because uh, 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 it reminds me uh, a couple of things that I prepared for previous webinars with all the credit gates and so on. So that, that is a, that was fun to see it from your end uh, using it. Thanks for showing it. Uh, a great job. Yes. Uh, so I see that we have tons of pack members. I'm gonna uh, Alejandro, senior performer, is here. So I'm gonna enable the webcam. I see that Alexander Pudelko as well is there. I'm gonna enable the webcam as well. Uh, and uh, and also yeah I think I enabled everyone out oh, Luca Luca as well 
up here it is and let me jump to a speaker view instead so uh, alejandro is uh, a webcam utility is uh, not connected at him so so um, i will let him resolve his technical issue there um okay so uh, first question uh, i would know it's not a question it's, uh, it's for you roman so uh, but you, just so you know, so the, the new Neoload services uh, of Captain, so we had a discussion on that. Now I, there's a flag where you can say, I don't want Captain to, uh, we don't want to spin up uh, controllers and load readers in the uh, Captain space, in the Kubernetes clusters managed mm -hmm. by Captain. But you can say, no, I, I'm going to just use one of the existing zone available in Neoload, and so that you can still take advantage of the infrastructure. So that's that's one thing. So uh, just small, okay, it's good uh, to know. And then also uh, we the invest API has been implemented. So uh, uh, near load seven dot six has been released uh, last Friday. So now uh, the even the uh, the interest integration has been enhanced with this new feature where our metrics are, are connected to tags and to contexts. So it's uh, it's it's even better. So that was not a question, that was just a, a small note. Um, I will ask the various hack members that are currently connected uh, if they have any questions. Uh, um, so maybe starting by Andy, uh, Ms. Oh, the, the Quality Gate master. Uh, so uh, Mr. Mr. Quality Gate, do you have any questions? Uh, not questions, just uh, I took a couple of notes and I, I got to throw it back to you, Roman. A pipeline is like a symphony. Magic things are going to happen. This is awesome. <laughs> this is an awesome <laughs> quote. We need to put this in there somewhere. Feel, feel free also to like, quote me. Yeah. yeah. And then you, you yeah, also... I mean, I, I, mean, I, mean, uh, I mean, we had this in the... No, sorry for interrupting you. Also, in previous talks, many people prepared... They put so much effort in pipelines they prepared, like probably for days or hours. And in the end, it's just the button you're going to trigger. And so many things are going to happen. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I have a question. A uh, question for you, Andy, or maybe Roman. Uh, so Andy showed me uh, uh, during our, our last session that there is a, uh, a library, a Groovy library available for Jenkins, where you all have those uh, really simplified methods to include in your in your Groovy scripts uh, in in Jenkins. Uh, so today you showed uh, Azure DevOps. So do you have the equivalent plugin for Azure DevOps, GitLab, and the others? So I think Roman mentioned it, uh, Bert van der Heiden uh, is another uh, partner of ours and also a captain community contributor. Uh, he built an Azure DevOps extension uh, where similar, you just enable it and then you can uh, call captain from Azure DevOps. Then we have the Jenkins library and we have from GitLab, uh, same thing, uh, Christian Heckelmann, he is another contributor. He built the same thing for uh, for GitLab. And in the okay. end, it's just API calls. So whatever other CI, CD tool you may want to integrate this with, it's just an API call. But you know, if you build an extension, it's sometimes just easier and more natural for these pipelines. Yeah. So a question for uh, the community, uh, more I mean, for you too, uh, maybe it would be worth for uh, the audience that uh, we can push some links in the chat. Where where can the where can the uh, all those yeah. uh, uh, the audience can find all those uh, great uh, plugins, or uh, uh, so that would be very useful. Uh, I th I'm thinking of a, a partner that he currently has intent to implement the quality gates uh, using GitLab, so maybe that will be worth to, to mm -hmm. share with it, the, the current uh, plugin available there in the Captain, Captain Contrib repo, I guess. Yeah, so for it, it depends. Some are, some are in the Captain Contrib repo, some are on the actual marketplace, like the one that just posted is the the Azure DevOps marketplace, and then on the, uh, I will post the other one. It's also in the references in my slides, if they're going to be public, you can look up the, the plugin we use there. Cool. Yeah, so the slides, uh, for those who not were or not being used to, so we were gonna publish the, all the slides and content that has been shared with us uh, in the uh, slide share. So uh, there will be a link in our uh, in the uh, pack websites, uh, at, so you have to click on the, the speaker, and the speaker, then you can see the content. And then once we have the video, of course, available, they will be also available at the speaker page. Um, Joey, do you have any questions yeah. for Roman? Not, not really questions, but I was I was looking and finishing up my work, and I 
I do really like Captain. I like how it flows, and I really like what you said about the a pipeline as a so, uh, that really wanted me to. Um, I like it, and I was really happy to see how it flows and uh, how it's working, and how other people are also using it. So that different angle, of what Andreas told us, uh, was really great. I really loved it. So good talk. Well, thank you. Alan, do you have any questions for Roman? Uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> firstly, I would just say I'm very excited about this whole Neolo Dynatrace integration. So it looks very cool, and, and hopefully I'll get to use it soon in earnest. Um, um, but Roman, I was wondering um, how you actually work with the, the dashboard and so on in terms of the, the project team. Um, and you get a good response. Uh, so who from the project are you showing this to? Or is it more something internal that the performance engineers are using? Um, and uh, do you um, get good feedback from mm -hmm. the, the project guys that are using it? Mm -hmm. Very good question. Um, to be completely honest with you, this is a completely new approach for us as well. And we still have to wait um, how it is being accepted for our customers. And ultimately, we want to have uh, the dashboard a sort of single point of, uh, so to say, to go for the whole collaboration part, because I would do in a kickoff together with the project, the SLI SLO definition and show them, show them that this is going, this is it, this is what we're going to measure in your test. And I'm hopefully this is also a good point to set up the discussions. That's, uh, but this is still something we have to figure out how it goes in the future with our customers. Yes. Okay. And maybe to add to this, Alan, because the reason why we came up with the dashboard idea was it was triggered by Roman uh, and his team in the discussion because, as you've seen from my presentation, internally Captain uses YAML files. And while a lot of people are comfortable with it, a lot of people don't even know how to spell YAML. So it's obviously challenging. And we are all visual. And we all, I think, if, as Roman said, if we can all sit together and talk and say, what are key metrics that actually specify the success of a service of an application? Let's put them on a dashboard. Let's see what the metrics are right now. And then if we're comfortable with that, say, this is the metric, this is the metric, and this is the metric. I really want Captain now to automatically have a look at it. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think uh, this is going to help us a lot. Another thing, because I also get a lot of these questions, some of our users uh, have started to build uh, template dashboards for certain technology stacks. So if they have, let's say, a classical three-tier Java application and they're onboarding a new project that runs on a three-tier Java application, then they start with, hey, this is your starting uh, dashboard that has five key SLOs on it that we want you to use as part of our organization, like, because it's a, it's, it's a standard in our organization, but you can extend it. So I think there's, there's more and more we will learn. We also want to share back these best practices, but I think it's still too early. We just need more more people give us feedback. Yeah. So basically, Thanks. just uh, uh, give me the, the 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 motivation, to be honest, to uh, to uh, just after uh, for the break, once we get the break, to go down to our product management team uh, and say, hey, I need to create dashboards with specific names. Uh, and each matrix, I need to put a, a comment with the SLI. But then what would be cool for the next version of the Neoloader SLI provider is to do the same thing that you're doing. So having a fixed dashboard, and that would be amazing. Uh, I really like that feature. Uh, thanks, Roman, for suggesting it, because I think it's a, it's just a, a great feature for, for Captain. Yeah, we thank so too. Thank you, too. I actually have an, uh, uh, another uh, idea that could go with it. If you say you want to make Neoload Web for a centralized dashboard, and uh, you have a pretty cool feature in Neoload Web called Webhooks. So if you're a performance engineer who is not into pipelines and has no clue of how to trigger all this in a pipeline, you just want to run your Neoload test and have your test automatically evaluated. All it actually needs and all our pipeline does there is it uh, fires the event start elevation evaluation to captain containing the information when the test was performed. So this could actually be a webhook in Neoload Web after the test. And uh, you wouldn't need even a pipeline for this. 
So let me work on that service because I don't think it's very complicated. Uh, yeah, I think so too. So give me, uh, uh, give me not tomorrow. Uh, give me. Uh, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> it was just a, an idea. Yeah, sorry <laughs> to catch you here on the oh. live audience. <laughs> Come on, Hendrik. You have 15 minutes time between the individual sessions. How much more time do you need? Uh, so we already passed the half a half of the marathon. So the 12 hours and 27 minutes. So uh, yeah, we are less than 12 hours. It's nothing. I already covered. Um, all right, cool. So, Luca, do you have any questions? No, uh, not on my side. Okay. All right. So, uh, if there is any other question left, uh, I would suggest to take a, a small break, uh, and uh, we will reconnect in uh, 15 minutes around that. So, uh, Joey can show us uh, his secret weapon that he has prepared for us. You see, I love it. I, I, I won't spoil the conversation because I, I really like it. So uh, stay yeah, tuned because it will be a, an amazing session.